So you come back to Edmonton, hometown, signed as a free agent. What was it like to come back and play in your hometown? Uh, great. I mean, going into free agency was the first time I ever kind of went through that and uh, didn't really know what to expect. So when uh, Edmonton came up as an option, I was really excited because, you know, we had made really good roots in Boston and, and had a uh, life all set up there. My kids grew up there. And so, you know, looking at other options, obviously not re-signing there, uh, you know, having a place where my family could feel comfortable, uh, we could get right into life. You know, you're not trying to figure out a city and uh, we all, we still have family here, uh, was huge, you know, and it's a team that I watched growing up. I watched them win cups, you know, I went to the, to the rink all the time and cheered a lot. So. Uh, you got that uh, kind of dream scenario as a kid where you can come back and, and put, put on the jersey uh, of the team you cheered for growing up. So uh, I feel very fortunate, you know. Obviously, I've seen enough careers to know that uh, a lot of guys don't get too many uh, uh, fairy tale situations like that. Yeah. Now, Andrew, you really take it seriously about what you do off the ice. And uh, is it important for you to impart that onto the young guys on this team? It is. I, I, like, there's a lot of things I think the further you go on your career, is, I think you learn even more of what a privilege it is, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it really is a privilege to play and to, you know, have, the, have hockey as a job. And like I said, to be in a situation uh, to play in a hockey city. Um, I think, you know, even looking back at my career when you're younger, you, you tend to lose that. You know, you're so, you're so in your bubble of just trying to play good hockey and you lose yeah. focus of anything outside of hockey, you know? You're just trying to stay in there. And so it's neat when you gain a little perspective, you get a little older, you try to pass those kind of things on, like to have interests outside of the rink, to get involved, to do things, and to just be real. You know, you don't have to try to be, you know, some cool guy. You know, just be yourself and just try to, you know, enjoy where you live and, and, and be a good person and, and get involved in the community. And it really makes for a better life for, for us too, you know? So I, I think that's, uh, that's, that's a big thing. I, I've learned that from, like I said, other guys that I played with, older guys that, uh, have had that perspective and, and yeah, I think it's a duty to try to pass it on. What's the biggest piece of advice that you can give those kids? There's a lot in there, but if there's one thing for these kids that are playing Bantam or Midget right now that want to make it to the NHL, what do you tell them? Oh man, uh, I think the only way we make it is to be the most stubborn, hardworking person. I mean, really, I think that's, you, you have to have extreme focus and, and just just work and work and work and work. And, and I think that uh, everybody's got talent now. Everybody. Uh, is dialed in with uh, you know training regimens or what they're supposed to eat but the guys that make it and the guys that have long careers are the ones that just don't give up and they're the guys that don't need to be prodded to work you know they just do it on their own like they would have just as hard a workout uh, if, if no trainer was around they're alone in the gym you know so I think it's just uh, in the in your head you know is, is where the game's kind of won and, and where, where you can separate yourself from uh, other people with uh, with similar talents.